Subscribestar.com slash Sure. Uh, I think that one of the things that we definitely have to be um, thinking about with this conversation is how do you in start conversation? It has to be such that our leadership is invested in anti-racist education practice and policy. Oh my God. Because if we don't start Longest there, up talk then it's very likely I've ever that heard. it would just continue to um, uh, reify itself. <laughs> And not only do we have to have it come from the top, but I think that there has to be a way of embedding it in the system of higher education such that people get rewarded for doing anti-racist work. Wow. Yeah, they're incentivizing um, you to riot. That is about <laughs> tenure. Rewarded for doing anti-racist agitating. Whether or not that is about promotion in, in yep. your, if you're an administrative person. Um, whether or not that is about research grants, like how is it that get we embed money. this into the the fabric of the institution? Just straight so up, they're straight up saying, "Wow, for doing anti-racism work." Holy crap, dude! They're just straight up saying like they want to incentivize um, administrators and teachers to get money and promotions for promoting like BLM stuff and like riot agitations and stuff like that. Getting uppity and in the face of white working class people just trying to get an education and a job well when race and racism generally come up it's about punishing people right people often yep. receive even going to a training as sort of like um this thing that they have to do but if we were to turn that on its head and make sure and lies we offering rewards for people actually doing being able to do this work then that might change the way no i want um, that, that no. even so like if we think about um, elementary and secondary education, right? If, if teachers had they want to reward school, people for being more, classroom. you know, more informants for anti-whiteism. So might create a different atmosphere for us. Lies. Okay, I think I have my thoughts together. Um, so, one of the things that happens with systemic racism is that yeah. white people they carry a higher monetary human value in the world. So, <laughs> in, in neighborhoods that are populated by predominantly white residents. Like the home values are higher. Yeah, why is that? That affects the tax base um, and uh, more people want to move into those spaces. Yeah, um, and why is that? As long as that is the case, and that's a part of systemic racism, <laughs> it's going to be very hard for black no. children to enter those spaces and not run into those stereotypes. So I thought I, this might come up. So there's a scholarly book it's out It's like here white called, merit. You can see it here. Really? Um, Fading away. My virtual screen's not uh, allowing it. It's called White Kids. Pretty oh, straightforward boy, title. Oh boy. Um, by Margaret Hagerman. H-A-G-E-R-M-A-N. What and, tribe is she um, a member of? It, it deals with um, the re work that I do from the perspective <sighs> of white parents. And one of the things that they These talk people are about nightmarish, is dude. that there's... Um, kind of three different uh, prototypes for how you can talk about race in, in these communities. Um, a multicultural, multi-inclusive way where you raise kids to think about and to confront these issues um, an overtly racist, racist way. And then also um, a group where people say that they're colorblind, that they're not racist, but there's no actual critical examination of it. Yeah. Um, where you can so just, you know, more you're inevitably racist no matter what and pay us so we can continue to tell you that you're racist and <laughs> reward people that we recruit in the university system that we that we continue to recruit in the university system to continue to tell other generations of younger people that they are all racist if they're white that is <sighs> do continue to see this play out as a challenge is in a documentary segment it's um, on hulu Episode 16 of the New York Times. Man, your shit's on uh, Hulu and you repress. Podcast called The Weekly. Your shit's on New York Times and Hulu and UMD for that matter. And you Dayton Universe, uh, University Dayton the other day I covered. And you're oppressed. This is bullshit, dude. This is anti hate About school desegregation challenges in New York City. Um, uh, there are actual real challenges right now. And you see the ambivalence Cause nobody wants of it, these yeah. middle to upper <laughs> class white parents about having black children or in Lat Latinx kid children, Asian American children in high, high numbers in their schools. Is it ambivalence or is it like outright repellence? I wonder. That they want, they want <laughs> diverse schools. But Do they? they still oh my gosh! To to run the show. So are they like forcing a smile? Are they forcing a smile when they say they want diverse schools, and and like the true nature of what they want is kind of shining through? So she interprets ambivalence like, oh, I'll take it one way or the other. But in reality, it's like they're hiding the fact that they really don't want like diverse schools, and if they could, they take their kid, white kids out. 
you bring children of color into those spaces with all the baggage of those stereotypes that are, as I say, are built in the walls. Then yeah, that's is science, very, yo. Um, the kids are dealing with that stuff. They don't want to be in study groups with those kids. They don't yeah. want to do projects with them. Those kids can't get access to certain classes. Those kids can't get access to certain classes. That's just something she feathered in there, along with all these weird tropes that they say, like, black kids don't have textbooks and they don't have laptops, so they can't learn. And it's like, yeah, we all know that that's like a lie. They just want more money for the goddamn teachers' unions and more excuse as to why they're not doing well despite being given all the money in the world and, and so for decades and decades and decades. It's all lies. Well. It's a grift, dude. And I, I don't think... A single solitary Blake believes in any of this crap, dude. They don't believe that they're fucking oppressed. It's one big grift to them. It really Black is. Children come through underfunded school districts by and large. No, they don't. Um, without the it's access not underfunded. to AP classes, teacher turnover is higher, so they. Without access to AP classes, or they can't test into they it usually. Without like lowered standards. Teachers, less committed teachers, so on and so forth. So then when they sit down and take that SAT at the end, then of course you're going to see these discrepancies. Um, if you have come from a family where there's not enough money to pay for all of the tutoring that um, helps to artificially boost those scores. So you're seeing privilege what? at every level. And so and every time it says, well, we just can't. Understand. Tutoring that artificially helps boost the scores. That's nonsense. See why those black kids can't get these test scores? Why can't get these get these grades? Why are they always tutoring that she, that she just basically admitted you know in so many words that tutoring is a more efficient way or homeschooling is a more efficient way to educate oneself and their kids like online independent learning that sort of thing is probably a better way to educate than uh the old guard schoolhouse model you know what i mean it's getting in trouble when you train uh white children kinda... to see those inequities to stop dismissing them and to embrace difference then you're going to see a space where um, it can truly be a, a multicultural space where uh, young people learn from each other and thrive. But as long what as are they um, learning? We have nothing of value. Where they say they value diversity, but they're they're honestly living in a white bubble. You're going to have problems. And you're going to have problems if you live in a white bubble, according to what what's this person's name? What's this person's name? Uh, Dr. Carlton E. Green was joined by Dr. Roger, duh, 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 Dr. Mia Smith. Bynum, Dr. Janelle Wong, and Cindy Stevens. I think this might be Cindy Stevens, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but you're going to be living in a white bubble. You're going to have problems, apparently. Uh, no, uh, I prefer that white bubble. What about you? <laughs> I sound off in the comments about that white bubble. Um, as a parent of a, of a teenager. What is wrong with uh, a white bubble, exactly? Why is multiculturalism the default? Why? And why does multiculturalism always mean non-white? Why? No space. I mean, they can't answer that question because, well, first of all, there's no concerted effort to mount that question by any real movement. Uh, conservatives won't touch it. Liberals, of course, are anti-white, like, overtly. Um, there's only, like, a handful of, like, YouTube jockeys like myself that get 420 views that say this kind of crap. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> There's really not much that can be done. This is, it's kind of black all of their advantages can come at a real psychological cost. So it's going to take a um, top to bottom revision of how we do it all, how we fund Revisionists. Let me make sure that, I, that um, you don't have kids who are learning from textbooks that are 20 years old, like I've seen. There it is. Training, oh, crumbling textbooks. Oh, crumbling textbooks. So Tyrone has to rape, uh, you know, Karen in a home invasion. George Floyd had to home invade that person who was pregnant and point a gun at her stomach. Because, you know, crumbling textbooks and crumbling schools, right? That's just, I mean, dude, sociologists and whatever the fuck. I mean, you heard the gobbledygook this woman's been spewing for 10 minutes or whatever it is. Like, she makes big bucks doing that. This this is just money being flushed down the toilet, dude. And it's not even being flushed down the toilet. It's our society being flushed down the toilet. We're paying people like this to ruin our goddamn society, dude. All around dude. the country. And so... Um, All around the country, that's right. It's going to take political will in order to be able to change it. And so it was a big question, so I apologize for a little bit of a long-winded answer, but... But there, there's a lot of layers Mia going Smith. on with that. That's so. her name. No, it's actually, thank you for your response. It just makes me think about how Data. Um, it is, it's begging the question of, are we creating 
non-racist schools or are we creating anti-racist schools right so how is you it are begging the question the training of teachers is there racism or is there more racism racism oh yeah give us racism box oh give us racism resources yeah let us have a living out of writing books about racism and racism racism breathing racism talking racism eating racism sins <laughs> No, how about we stop that, dude? How, do we intervene? how much longer can I even take this goddamn the clip? Spaces where teachers are being prepared to go out into classrooms to make sure that that is a non-racist space because teachers uh, will take the culture of their training programs into the classroom, right? Um, Cindy, where are you going to offer uh, something? We could just have like yeah. Blake. We could have just like Blake schools where we had Blake teachers, you know. Um, one of the if it's such a problem. Me, <clears throat> I've, I've been teaching and they could pay for it for a lot of years. And we talk about, do you view things as a zero-sum game? And I think if you view education as a zero-sum game or getting ahead in education as a zero-sum game, then it's my kids against your kids. And if instead we thought it is about though. raising the... It is my kids against your kids because they just said that if you live in a white bubble, it's a problem. They just said that whiteness is a problem. They said that they've been saying that whiteness is an affliction, a parasitic affliction that needs to be undone. So I mean, it is if you're if you do have white kids, it is white kids against black kids because that's the way they're setting it up, and they're setting it up so like you need to have your white bubble burst and have your white resources basically taken and given arbitrarily to Blakes. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they want access to your resources and that's pretty much what it is, right? They don't want to have to adhere to the same standards, but they want to have access infinitely to your resources. It's a shakedown. It's extortion you know, it's with the word racism. That if everybody benefits, we all do better as a society. If we could change that fundamental assumption. So that no, not, dude. We don't view it as... We're in competition for scarce resources, and therefore I've got to take every possible advantage. There, there's a fundamental disagreement on how the resources should be used and for whom, though, because racial tribalism is real. So, I mean, like, how do you... <laughs> that's, what, that's what egalitarians fundamentally either deny or, like, play dumb about because they're grifters. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes, like... I don't know if they're naive or just... I, I, these days I'm going with their malicious, evil, you know, actors, but bad faith acting kind of scumbags, but, uh, you know. And that assumption is built in so deeply to American culture that we don't even question it a lot of times. We just assume that everything is a scarce resource rather than, in fact, maybe, maybe we could all contribute and expand the entire pie of resources and that it would actually make American society better overall. Sounds like commie bullshit. I think you're pointing to and capitalist bullshit. Like one of those tenets of white supremacy culture that's around um, competitiveness that, that actually gets in the way of us thinking about how do we live communally together. White supremacy exactly. culture. So white supremacy culture is competitiveness. That's probably comes from that like black his, uh, history museum. Um, info card that was going around the internet like uh, punctuality meritocracy law and order um, competitiveness that sort of thing are, are all tenets of white supremacy or whiteness that sort of thing I think that's what he's referring to which would be it's absurd shift. no but it, it would be a shift toward the shittiness because you'd be shifting it toward a group that is less meritocratic than other groups and you'd basically be saying like oh inequities injustice and it's just it's just absurd. You're creating a society that's fundamentally unmeritocratic and anti rationality. It's just it's not a good place to live. It's not if I could look into the Durst crystal ball here, it's not gonna be a good fucking future. The browner it gets with this ideology in place. Like buckle your safety belts. <laughs> Ladies and gents. Federal patriarchal capitalism, oh. right? Oh my God! Um, Not hetero patriarchal. Somebody has put in the in the chat room. There, there are lots of questions actually. <laughs> um, there, there, there's a question here. I don't know if anybody knows. Can you imagine gay matriarchal? I mean, we're pretty much almost there. Like gay, homonormative matriarchal, like mealworm fries and cicada burgers. <laughs> At your fuck. I mean, like. The I'm gonna fuck? take a risk here. Does anybody know? No, no more Fourth of July though. It'll be like Juneteenth cookouts with cicada burgers and mealworm fries and homonormative gay triarchy. About liberation um, perspectives. I mean, not liberation. Abolitionist um, perspectives in higher in, in education. 
Anybody have any, they think they're abolitionists. No, These uppity so bleaks. We have to think about that. There is a question here, though, about should we be requiring students to have um, uh, anti-racist education? No, that's should indoctrination. We be college students to take courses um, that help them to understand anti-racism, to help them understand. No, you anti-white grifter. To help them understand all no. the tenets that come out of so like a racist education. What do, we, do you have any thoughts on that and how we might be thinking about that at the University of Maryland? I think that um, we're in a of reckoning on our campus and as a country. Reckoning. In the next six months, we are, we are going to decide what kind of country we are going to be. Right, and this was before uh, shit popped off with the goddamn, or was this, with, oh, this was Summer of Love, wasn't it? This was like a year ago. In 20 years, give or take five or so on the front of the back, this is going to be a majority minority country. Ooh. We can do it the um, way where it's the truth, justice, and freedom under the law, or we can do it the ugly way. And uh, part of these protests, I think we She's threatening. Pivot. She's like threatening in addition to all the violence that's been occur in incurring, and she's just able to do that. <laughs> like, she's just able to fucking do that. Like, it's this mouth breathing like dead eyed low IQ just gaze like we can do it just the hallway mm -hmm. like, this is what universities are paying um, and it's gratifying for to see these protests um, because it's, mostly it's peaceful forcing, at that a, a forcing a reckoning that I've certainly never seen in my lifetime I've been teaching for 20 years um, on these topics I've been thinking about them for a lifetime and so, um, and what I'm thinking, at least my, my rough uh, observation, is that a lot of protesters are under the age of 35. So this is a generational movement in many respects, particularly the multicultural parts of it. And so um, someone was just asking this question. I've been trying to answer. So she just basically said, yeah, this is a reckoning that's been coming um, up, the, up the pipe because she's been talking about it, teaching about it. And they t said at the beginning of this video, that they've been in, want, trying to incentivize people in the institutions of higher learning to be um, anti-racist educators to like give them promotions and money and stuff. So this is just them telling you that they want to shake you down for cash so that they can continue rioting and for black power so that they could just seize property from you via violence. And they're using the university system in order to indoctrinate foot soldiers to do this and they're they're just telling this straight up to you and this only has like 900 views conservative media doesn't care about it they don't care like they're gonna call this like bigotry of low expectations and mlk is rolling over in his grave or some such nonsense like that no he's 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 yippy skippying dude I'm a, as an educator i want to fill that cup yeah, if you want to see this campus be an anti-racist campus, you need to write our campus? campus leaders, write op-eds in the Diamondback, write the legislators, write the um, the Board of Governors, they call them Board of Chancellors, the Board of Every state university has a board that manages the operations for the university system of Maryland. Find those people, find the contact information, figure out how to get on the agenda and tell them that this is the kind of campus you want the University of Maryland to be. Revolting. That, those are my recommendations. Write your legislature, state and federal. So you want more rioting and more Thank twerking you. on top of ambulances? Right. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, 